Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. Joining me today, the president of Higher Things, Pastor Dwayne Bombsch. How are you today, sir? Doing fantastic. And yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. We are just about to dive into Holy Week. It's Good Friday. Uh, what are we looking forward to? I know there's there's a lot of church. And so we, we could theoretically talk about uh, Church Friday or even potentially Church Saturday if there's a vigil. But let's let's lean into it because uh, this is going somewhere good, I think. Uh, let's, let's talk about Easter. Easter. Yeah, the fun thing about Easter, um, Easter sunrise service. And um, my congregation is one of the very few um, in California who, which has its own cemetery. And we uh, have our Easter sunrise service at our cemetery. So it's, uh, it's kind of a cool thing um, because it is at sunrise at the cemetery and the traditional reading for Easter sunrise service is John 20, um, one to eight where Mary Magdalene is, is going to the tomb um, and all the ladies actually, but the focus there is on Mary and then uh, going back to get Peter and John to come out. Um, but it's kind of a cool thing to stand in the cemetery Proclaim the gospel, the resurrection, uh, among all of the saints that are at rest, um, awaiting yeah. rest. I can't think of a place where it would matter more. Um, it's kind of a Midwest thing, you're right, to sort of have the little rural church with the little rural cemetery, but to actually be able to go there and sort of stand amidst the last great enemy and proclaim Christ is risen. There, there's something just... Uh, utterly, utterly joyful in that. Um, I, I, I personally have my qualms with the sunrise service just because I'm an I'm a, I'm a big sinner. Uh, I don't like waking up, uh, especially before Jesus. But um, if if you have to start it out, that would be uh, that would be the place to do it. I, I gotta imagine that it would it would have had a, a weird feeling if you were Mary going out to the cemetery that morning. And so, do your people get used to it, or or is it sort of still like a, a definite feeling? It's um. It's 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 a long standing tradition here, uh, so they're kind of used to it. But still, it's because um, it isn't you know it isn't like my previous congregation where the cemetery was next door. You know, for for most of us, it's it's a fifteen minute drive out to the cemetery. So it's not like you know we're done and then okay, let's go into the parish hall and get a cup of coffee. You know, we're we right. got you got a 15, 20 minute drive back to the church after that. Um, but it's at the site where the church originally was back in the, you know, in the early 20th century. So, you know, it used to be next door. Uh, so, yeah. And, and it really makes it um, every time that I have a graveside service or a committal, um, there's this sort of this automatic um, reference to Easter and the sunrise service that we have there too. So um, even though every time we go out there, you know, it's kind of, um, was it Dr. Nagel who said, go to the sacrament as if you're preparing to go to your death so that when you go to your death, it's like you're going to the sacrament. Yeah. I think. And, um, but so, you know, go to the, you know, we go to the cemetery all the time to bury the dead, but the whole point of going to the cemetery to bury the dead is that that's not their final resting place as much as we want to say, you know, this is their final resting place. Well, it's their, maybe it's their final napping spot. Right, but they're going to wake up. And, and quite frankly, that's not even the closest you get to be with them. Um, I, I don't know who really started talking about it this way, but when we talk about the communion of the saints, there, there is a connection between uh, the divine service, the sacrament, and the cemetery. If you want to be close to folks, the cemetery is a place where their bodies lie, but, but where can we be real close to them? And this is, I mean, it's what we hear every divine service in the proper preface. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. You know, so it's, and it's, it's something I referenced in, in uh, the Holy Thursday sermon that, you know, where, you know, where is, where is Jesus? You want to be close to Jesus where he's physically present. Where is he physically present? There on the altar. And if he's there on the altar, who's there with him? You know, it's, it's the whole heavenly host, you know, it's all of the angelic armies. It's everybody who's gone before. It's all of the saints and all of the angels. And that's where we're the closest to them. And I think that's what makes the hallelujahs 
coming back um, on Easter Sunday and, and the glory of all of these things. That's what makes them, I think, even <clears throat> we've, you know, we've had held them in abeyance for these 40 days plus Sundays. Um, but now we get to, we get to go back to them and remember all of the joy and the glory and, and, and the, the, the wonderfulness of, of the, the fullness of the liturgy there and everything that it has to say. Um, and those alleluias mean something even a little more when, uh, especially if you've recently had a funeral in your congregation. I had, I had two last week. Um, and with both of them, it's kind of like, okay, we may have gone to the cemetery. Yeah, and then we did for, for one, we laid Bob, dear Bob, laid him to rest in the cemetery with you know right there where we're going to have our our easter sunrise service and now now we gather and easter that proclamation of christ is risen he is risen he beat hallelujah is all the more uh meaningful for uh those of us who who miss bob so much and they're just that idea for someone that we that we love dearly who is is no longer with us in body um, the anticipation for the re final resurrection when, when Jesus returns. So not only, you know, Jesus, the first fruits of, of the resurrection, uh, but also the fact that he is coming back. And when he comes back, all of those who we've laid to rest are coming back as well. And so um, yeah, every time that we're in the cemetery for a, 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 a burial, I, we do, we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Because yes. why wouldn't you? Right. It, it brings, especially to the lonely, uh, a great comfort that your, your, your parish gets to go back for Bob. Uh, they get to go back and collect him at the cemetery uh, this coming Sunday. They get to, to go and meet Jesus, rip him out of the tomb. They get to join him in the sacrament with angels and archangels. The alleluias that we, we took away for Lent the, right before the gospel reading and the glory in Excelsius too. I uh, made church a little bit shorter, but you had to go on Wednesday. So you, you sort of lost in the long run. Uh, but, but you get those, but those are the angel songs. The angels are back to sing with us that, that this is a place where loneliness just has to bow its head along with death because here Christ is present to bring comfort and victory and join us together with all of those that death would try to rob from us. This is worth waking up early for, even if you're crabby like me and need a cup of coffee. That's, that's fantastic. And you said the reading is going to be uh, in John this, this year for the three year? For, for the, the sunrise service, it okay. is John chapter 20. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. That, uh, and <laughs> John's gospel. So of course, you know, John doesn't refer to himself, you know, the, the other disciple, you know, ran with Peter and, and because, you know, and there's a little bit of a, you know, I beat him there. I got there first, but I let the old guy go in the tomb first. Right. The apostle whom Jesus loved. Was the apostle faster. whom Jesus loved is the little, is the faster guy. Right. That makes me happy too, to know that you're still allowed to be a sinner on Easter and it's actually for the sinners. Like even going out to the tomb, uh, there's John talking about himself, the apostle whom God loved, uh, the, the favorite son. Um, it's, it's definitely faster than Peter. Remember that he's smarter too and loved, uh, but Christ was risen for both of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not just for them, for us. Mm -hmm. And so when, yeah, so when we do gather, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how lonely we feel. You know, we have the assurance and we know that Jesus is there with us and for us. And we have the assurance and we know that Jesus is, is dead and risen for us. So our catechism talks about this, uh, the, these three enemies over and over again, that it's, it's, it's sin, death, and the power of the devil. Um, Easter is a confrontation with the victory over all three of those. So you see uh, John and, and Peter running out in their sin, only to, to be met by the risen Lord. Uh, well, the angels will proclaim the risen Lord, um, and, and they'll see him soon. Uh, you see death itself destroyed. Uh, we will go to the cemetery and, and proclaim it. Where does, where does the devil meet his end to? Where do we see sort of a victory over the devil there in the catechism? There's, um, yeah, you're talking about that. I, I had a flash, a flash right quick to the, uh, the old, um, icons of the resurrection. Yeah. Where you have Jesus standing there and he's got his, he's reaching down. I mean, 
do your your Google image search for this. And and yeah, he's in one hand, he's got Adam's Adam in one hand and Eve in the other, and he's pulling them from their tombs. And and over his in most of them, over his left shoulder, you've got Moses and Elijah and John the Baptist. You know, and over his right shoulder, you've got David and Solomon and Abel. Wow. And then below him, and he's standing on his cross. You know, the cross is on the ground. He's standing on it. And below that is either, depending on who the artist is, is either a dragon or a guy who's tied up. I mean, trussed up like a Thanksgiving turkey. And, um, and that's the devil. He's there. He's tied up. Left in the, in the, in, in the darkness. Um, defeated. So, you know, sin, sin is defeated in, um, where is it? Where are the great you know, sin, death, the devil. Yeah. So death is done for because Jesus isn't dead anymore. You know, sin is done for because his, 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 his blood has covered them. And then the power of the devil is done for because once you take sin away from the devil and once you take death away from the devil, what, what, what does he have left? No more weapons, no more teeth. There, yeah, he has, he has no power left. Oh, he's going to try. Yeah. He's going to lie, and he's going to deceive, and he's going to whisper, and he's going to do all of that. But ultimately, though, they have no power anymore because all of his other weapons are gone. So there's this, the, the Bible verse, you know, the devil prowls about like a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour. But this paints a, a picture of like an old toothless lion that, that can't actually do anything to you anymore. We, we get to clothe ourselves in the resurrection in the waters of our baptism. We get to proclaim to, to the high heavens that uh, with angels and archangels, uh, Christ is risen. And so we will rise. This is a day um, that, that everything else is really going to start to hinge on. Um, in fact, if, if Christ were, were not uh, risen from the dead, what, what would happen to us um a whole lot of nothing yeah we'd need there, new jobs we, yeah we you know if if christ were not risen from the dead yeah we died that's it yeah there you wouldn't even be a day. resurrection to everlasting death because you know jesus killing death yeah, right. There would be nothing. There would be nothing worth hoping in. And so the resurrection means everything to us. You actually get to see uh, in the, the narrative. It's not just sort of something you're, you're sort of asked to, to believe blindly, but you, you're actually shown pictures of people really struggling with it, really not even grasping it all the way and carrying this story, even in the face of, of um, certain death themselves. These, uh, these apostles will, will be uh, martyred and run off and in uh, and and imprisoned on lonely islands uh the, these apostles will will die singing the same thing that that we get to sing this easter because they know they're not going to stay dead uh the the joy of the resurrection means your faith is not in vain that if you are lonely you are not alone that if you are sinful you are forgiven that the joy of the resurrection then is that there's hope even really <laughs> early in the morning <laughs> even early in the morning absolutely the promise is there and that's and thanks be to God that the apostles went out and, and suffered what they did because they brought that life-giving word and promise to us. Fantastic. Anything else you want to leave us with today, Pastor? I think we got it. Fantastic. I'm, I'm ready, to, ready to get the old pipes warmed up for the hallelujahs. I uh, can't wait. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. If you are listening to the Drive to School podcast, we're going to take a, uh, a little break ourselves. We'll be gone Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but we'll be back Thursday. Uh, like and subscribe. Subscribe on your podcast app. Subscribe on the YouTube channel so you definitely won't miss the next episode when it drops. But thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, since we won't see you, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and spoil it, even though it's Good Friday. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much.